Hi guys, today we're going to be making this dishcloth, or you can use it as a washcloth, or you can also use it as a hot pad. And for this project, I used a 5 millimeter crochet hook. If you would like a bigger project, just use a bigger hook, and if you would like a smaller project, use a smaller hook. And for the yarn, I use this Capri Eco Cotton, and this yarn is a medium four weight yarn. It's 85% recycled cotton and 15% polyester. And because I'm using my project as a dishcloth, this yarn works well. If you would like to use it as a hot pad, just use a 100% cotton yarn. So don't use this yarn that I used in the tutorial. Just find a yarn that is 100% cotton and that will be able to handle the heat of a hot pad. And the color of this one here is sage and this one here is pewter. And I also used a yarn needle to sew in all of my ends and a pair of scissors. And with that, we will get into making this dishcloth or hot pad. So to get started, we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. And we're going to chain 22. So one, two, three, and once you have your chain of 22, we're going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So remember that loop on your hook doesn't count as anything. We count back one, and into that second chain, we will do our first single crochet. And from here, we're just going to single crochet into every single chain for the entirety of the length of it. I'm coming to my final single crochet here. And we've completed row one. And for row two, we're going to chain one, and that chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to turn our work, and again, we're going to single crochet into each stitch all the way across. So we're going to start in that very first stitch with our first single crochet. And again, we're just going to do one single crochet into every stitch all the way across. I'm coming to the final stitch of row two, and don't get confused with that little loop that's right at the end there. That's actually the chain that we skipped when we started on row one. So if you kind of turn your work upwards, you'll see that final V, and that will be the final stitch of row two. So I'll put a single crochet into that final stitch, and that's row two completed. And again, we're going to chain one and turn our work to get started on row three. Now, at this point, you can bring in a stitch marker and mark the center stitch for this row, but you do not have to do that. The center stitch is going to be the 11th stitch. So if we start counting, that's the chain one there. So we'll start with the first stitch, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, and we will mark that stitch. But again, you do not have to do this. We can just go ahead and count because we don't need to keep track of too many stitches. 
So for row three, we're going to do single crochets in every stitch up until that stitch marker, or if you do not have a stitch marker, we're going to single crochet into the first 10 stitches of this row. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And now we've reached our center stitch. You can see I've reached the stitch marker here. I'm going to remove that. And into that center stitch, or the 11th stitch, we're going to do our first bobble stitch. So to do a bobble, we yarn over the hook, we go in to that stitch, which again is the 11th stitch. We yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through those first two loops on your hook. And what we just did, we're going to do four times total. So that was the first time, we'll do it again. Yarn over, go back into that same stitch yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through those first two loops on your hook. That was the second time. We'll do it again, yarn over, back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through those first two loops on your hook. That was the third time, so we'll do it one more time, yarn over, back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through those first two loops on your hook. And at this point you should have five loops on your hook. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to yarn over and pull through all five of those loops on your hook, like so. And at this point I kind of hold the top of that stitch with my two fingers here, and I'm just going to give the working yarn a little tug just to tighten that stitch a little bit. This part is not crucial, but I do like to do that. And then I also kind of hold my thumb in the center of that stitch and just push it outwards. Because we're gonna be seeing the bobbles on the opposite side, it kind of pushes it out just to make it more defined and then I kind of push it down a little bit. And then from here, we're going to single crochet into the very next stitch. And it should be, because we just did that bobble in the center stitch and we had 10 stitches on this side, we should have 10 to do on this side, and that includes that first one. So I'm just going to single my crochet my way across here in every stitch until I get to the end of the row. And I'm doing my final single crochet here. Again, if you ever get confused, just look for that final V. And I'm gonna put a single crochet into that final stitch. And then for row four, I'm going to chain one. Again, that chain one does not count as a stitch and it won't for the entirety of the pattern. And I'm going to turn my work. And row four is one single crochet into every stitch all the way across. When I reach that bobble, I will come back on and just show you where I single crochet in the bobble stitch. All right, I'm getting close to the bobble here. So you'll always have the single crochet right before the bobble stitch. 
and it can be a little bit tucked there so just make sure you're not missing that one. So I'll do my single crochet into that stitch and then we've reached the bobble. And this one can be pretty tricky to see where you put your hook, but once again, if you turn your work and look at the top, you'll see that V. And that's the V that you want to have on top of your hook when you're doing the single crochet into this bobble. So just go under those two loops and do your single crochet. And then again, there will be the one right after the bobble. Like so. And I'm just going to work my way across for the remainder of row four, putting one single crochet into every stitch. All right, I just finished up row four and you can really see that bobble popped out now. And that's going to act as the trunk of the tree. So now we're going to start for row five working on the base of the tree. So for row five, we're going to chain one, turn our work. And for row five, again, feel free, I'm not going to use it anymore, but feel free to bring in a stitch marker and mark the numbered stitch that I mentioned for each row of bobbles. But for row five, we're just going to single crochet into the first two stitches. So that was the first one. And we'll jump to the next stitch and do our second single crochet. And then we're going to start our bobble. So into that third stitch, or the next stitch after you did your two, we'll do our first bobble. So again, to do a bobble, we yarn over, go into that next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through those first two loops on your hook. And again, we're going to do that four times total. So we yarn over, go back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through those first two loops on your hook. That was the second time. Yarn over, back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through those first two loops. That was the third time. Yarn over, back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through those first two loops. So we want to do that until we have those five loops on top of our hook. And it can start to get a little bit tighter the more you work into that stitch, but that's what makes the bobbles really pop out is doing it that those four times. So again, we'll yarn over and go through all five of those loops. And once again, I kind of hold that stitch and then grab the working yarn, give it a little tug just to tighten it and put my thumb right into the center of that bobble and kind of push it out and then down just to help it pop out a little bit. And then we'll jump to that next stitch and do our single crochet. And now we're going to do another bobble. So in the next stitch, again, we yarn over into that next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through those first two loops. And we want to do that again until we have those five loops on our hook. We have those five loops, we yarn over, pull through all five of those loops, give our working yarn a little tug, press your thumb in the middle and then kind of push it down and single crochet into the next stitch. So we're going to repeat the same pattern of we just single crocheted into the next stitch, into the next stitch, 
we're going to do our bobble, yarn over into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through two loops. We do that four times total. That was the first, second, third, and fourth. Yarn over, pull through all five of those loops. Give our working yarn a little tug. Push it out and down. And single crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that pattern of single crocheting into the next stitch and then bobble and then single crochet into the next stitch, bobble into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that all the way across until we have two stitches remaining. And I will come back on when I have those two stitches remaining. All right, I'm coming to the end of row five. I actually have three stitches remaining at this point, so I'm gonna do my next bobble, which will get me to two stitches remaining. And I have those final two stitches remaining. So you remember when we started row five, we started with our single crochets. So now we're going to end with our final two single crochets. So one into that next stitch and then one into the final stitch. So on those bobble stitch rows, we want to make sure we're ending with as many single crochets as we started with on that row. And for the next row, we'll chain one, turn our work, and it's another single crochet row. So after each bobble row, we always do a single crochet row. So again, we single crochet into each stitch all the way across, so into that first one. Remember, don't miss the ones right before these bobble stitches that can get a little bit tucked away. So we'll go into that stitch, and then when we reach our bobbles, again, if you're just looking at it from here, it can be tricky to see where to put your hook. So if you just turn your work, like so, and it can sometimes be right towards the back, like mine is here, you'll see that V. So it's kind of the V that's the furthest away, and we go right under those two loops and do our single crochet. And then it'll be a single crochet in between those two bobbles, in that single crochet from the row prior, and then a single crochet into the top of the bobble. Again, there'll be a stitch in between those bobbles and into the top of the bobble. So I'm just going to work my single crochets into each stitch all the way across for this row. And then I'll come back on. Okay, I just finished up the row. You can see we have these nine baubles for the base of the tree. So going on to row seven, we will chain one, turn our work, and row seven, again, is going to be a bobble stitch row. So we're just alternating bobble stitch rows with those rows of single crochets. So now we're going to go on to our bobble stitch row. And with each bobble stitch row, we're going to increase the number of single crochets prior to starting our bobbles by one. So if you remember two rows prior, we did our two single crochets and then started with our bobbles. On this one, we're going to single crochet into the first three stitches. So there's one, two, three, 
two and three. And then we start with our bobble followed by a single crochet, bobble, single crochet, until we have those final three stitches to single crochet into. Again, making sure the end of the row, the number of single crochets you have there, you'll have at the beginning. So if we start with three, we end with three. So I just did my three and I will start my bobble. five loops on my hook, yarn over through all five of those loops, tighten it, kind of push it out and down, and single crochet into the next stitch. Bobble into the next. Oh, that one got a little bit messed up, but I will redo that one off camera. So again, we just did our single crochet, we'll bobble, single crochet into the next stitch, bobble into the next stitch, repeat that across until we have our final three single crochets and I'll come back on at that point. I just finished my final bobble there and I will single crochet into the final three stitches. Chain one, turn my work, and for row eight, it's going to be a single crochet row all the way across. And you can see here that now we have eight bobbles on this row. And the bobbles are always going to fall kind of in between the bobbles from the previous bobble row and it'll eventually start working its way up like this and the number of bobbles on each row will decrease by one. So I'm going to go ahead and work this piece up off camera. So again it's going to be a single crochet row, chain one, turn your work, and then a bobble stitch row. And each bobble stitch row the number of single crochets prior to starting your first bobble increases by one. So on this one, it was three single crochets and then starting the bobble on the next bobble row, we'll start with four single crochets and then the bobbles and then single crochet row and then the next bobble row will start by five single crochets and then the bobbles. And I'm gonna keep working up that pattern until I have one bobble right in the center for the top of the tree. All right, I just completed row 21. You can see that was the row where we did our final bobble right at the top center of the tree. So at this point, for row 22, I'm going to chain one and just do my single crochet across into every stitch. And there's row 22 complete. And just like how we started with those two single crochet rows, we want to make sure we have the two above the tree. So for row 23, I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and again, just do one single crochet into every stitch all the way across. And after this row, we will go on to working on the border around this piece. All right, so that's kind of the main square that has the Christmas tree all complete. 
And like I mentioned, we're going to go on to working on the border around it. So I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and at this point we're going to start working in the round. So we're going to be working single crochets around this entire square. So to do that, I'm going to start by just single crocheting my way across here until I get to this corner. All right, I've made it to the corner stitch here. So instead of just doing the one into it and then chaining one and turning my work, I'm actually going to do three single crochets into this corner stitch. And that's what we're gonna do into every one of those corner stitches. And that just kinda helps us work our way around so now we can work down this side of the piece. And on this side, you just want to do one single crochet at the end of each of these rows. So with single crochet, there's, there's actually some nice spaces at the end of each row that you can work into. So if you just jump to that next one, we will put a single crochet into that stitch and then jump to that next opening there and we'll put a single crochet there. And I'm just going to work my way down this side, putting one single crochet into the end of each row. And again, I will come back on when I've made my way to this corner. All right, I'm just about at this corner. I have that one final single crochet to do prior to reaching this corner stitch. And then again, in the corner stitch, we're going to do our three single crochets into that stitch. So there's one, two, and three. And again, we'll turn our work and work along this bottom side. And again, when we get to this corner here, we will put our three single crochets into it, turn our work, and work up this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and I will come back on after doing this bottom edge, again, the three single crochets in the corner and working up this side, and I will come back on when I've made my way back over here. All right, I've just about made it here to that first single crochet that we started with when we started working our way around the piece. So I have that final single crochet to do and then I've reached this final space where that first single crochet that we did is coming out of. So we wanna make sure we have those three single crochets in each of the corners. So I'm gonna put two more single crochets into that same space that that first one we started with is coming out of. And that will give us the three total single crochets in this corner, like so. And then we're going to slip stitch to that first single crochet that we started with when we started working our way around. So just single crochet, or sorry, slip stitch to that first stitch that we started with. And at this point, I have 94 single crochets all the way around. And here, we're going to chain one, and I'm going to double crochet back into that same stitch that I just slip stitched to. And I'm going to work my way along this top edge, putting one double crochet into every stitch. I have a knot in my yarn there, but that's okay. And 
As soon as I make it over to this side, I will come back on because we are going to do something a little bit different in the corners for this round. Right, I'm coming up to where I have those three single crochets in the corner. So I'm going to do a double crochet into that first one that's in the corner stitch and into the second one or the middle single crochet between those three I'm going to do a double crochet chain one and double crochet back into that same stitch so instead of doing three double crochets in that corner we're going to do a double crochet chain one double crochet all into that corner stitch and then I'm just going to turn my work and again start working double crochets down this side of the work and when I've made my way over to this corner I'm going to do the same thing that I did over here so when I get to that group of three stitches in the corner I'm going to put a double crochet into the first one a double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the second stitch or the middle one of the two between the two, and then double crochet my way across the bottom. Again at the corner when I get to the group of three, I'll put my double crochet in the first one. In the middle corner stitch, I will do my double crochet, chain one, double crochet all into the same stitch. And again, then just work double crochets along this edge. So when I've made my way all the way around, doing that pattern of just the double crochet, chain one, double crochet into each of the corner stitches, and I'm back over here, close to where I started, I will come back on and we'll go on to the next step together. All right, I've made my way back around and I'm getting close here to where I started. So I just kind of want to go through each stitch here because it can look a little bit confusing in this corner. So we have our final single crochet and then it looks like there's the group of three here. You can see one, two, three. But this final, what looks like a stitch, is actually the slip stitch. So it'll be that slip stitch and then the chain one and then the first double crochet. So remember that first double crochet actually went into the what is considered, I guess, the final stitch of that group of three that was in the corner stitch. So these are the other two stitches here. And then again, that's a slip stitch that doesn't count as anything. And that chain one doesn't count as anything. So I'm going to do my final double crochet here into this stitch. And then again, I have those two stitches prior to that slip stitch that doesn't count as anything. And then the double crochet coming out of the third single crochet of the group of three. So we're going to do a double crochet into that first one. And then this one is the middle of the three. So that's where I'm going to do my double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then again, we just skip over that slip stitch and chain one, and we're going to slip stitch to the first double crochet that we started with. So go right into that first stitch and slip stitch. And there's that corner all complete. So for the final round of this border, you can see it's looking like a nice square now, we're going to do another round of single crochets. So I'll chain one, go back into that stitch with a single crochet, and then I'm just going to work my way across 
with single crochets. And again, for this single crochet round, we're going to do, actually, I will come back on at that corner and I'll let you know what to do. All right, I'm just about at that corner. I'll do my single crochet and then now I've reached that chain space. So into the chain space, we're going to do our three single crochets. So there's one, two, and three. So I'm not working into the chain, just right into that chain space. And then we're going to work single crochets down this side. But what happens often is this first stitch after the chain space, you can see the stitch kind of gets hidden behind those three single crochets. So make sure you're not missing that stitch. You can either kind of push the single crochets over or I just kind of push my hook through there on the top of that double crochet like so. So just make sure you're not missing that first stitch because it really can get hidden behind those three single crochets. And then again, working our way down this side with single crochets. I'll work a single crochet into each of the double crochets until I get to that corner stitch and into that chain space. I'm going to do my three single crochets Make sure I'm not missing this stitch after doing that when it's hidden. And again, just working my way around doing the same thing. Three single crochets in that chain space. And I will again come back on when I've made my way around. All right, I've made my way around. I'm back at my double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So I'm going to single crochet into the stitch prior to the chain space. Again, my three double crochets into that chain space. One, two, and three. And sing again, make sure you're not missing this stitch after the chain space that's kind of tucked behind there. So I will single crochet into that stitch. And then I'm going to slip stitch to the first single crochet of the round. So again, that's the slip stitch in the chain one. We're just gonna ignore that, skip right over that, and slip stitch to that first single crochet of the round. And at this point, I'm going to fasten off. So to fasten off, I chain one, cut my yarn, pull that yarn through and pull tight and we're all fastened off. And you wanna bring in your second color at this point and we're going to work on the border as you can see in this one that I did. And that border is made by surface crocheting and I promise it's very easy. So I have my second color here. I'm going to start with a slip knot and I'm not yet going to put this slip knot on my hook. I'm just going to have it ready. I'll tighten it just a little bit like so. And we're going to start in the top right corner of our piece. And where we do the border is in the same stitches that that first round of single crochet that we did all the way around when we were initially cleaning up those edges, we're going to go into those same stitches. So, Starting in this corner here, which is the obvious stitch or opening, sorry, in that top right corner, I'm going to put my hook through that opening. And again, that's right into the same stitch that that very initial round of single crochets is in. And then from the back to the front, I'm going to put the slip knot on my hook and again I will tighten it just a little bit more and I'm going to pull that slip knot through that opening 
like so. And I'll tighten it just a smidge. And then I'm going to work my way along surface crocheting and all a surface crochet is is a slip stitch. So I will jump to that next stitch and again you can see it's that stitch that the single crochet is in, that very initial round of them. I'm going to go into that stitch and from the back I'm going to grab the yarn, pull that yarn through, and through the loop on my hook. And I'm just kind of doing this loosely. I'm not pulling too tight. So now I will jump to that next stitch, put my hook through that stitch, grab the yarn from the back, pull it through to the front, and through the loop on my hook. And again, just keeping it nice and loose. Jump to the next stitch, hook through, grab that yarn from the back, pull it through to the front, and through the loop on my hook. And I'm going to work my way along this row here and every once in a while I will just check and make sure I'm working into the right stitches. So always making sure that it's in the stitch that that initial round of single crochets is in. And when I get to this corner I will come back on and show you what I do there. So again just jumping to that next stitch, grabbing the yarn from the back, pulling it through to the front, and through the loop on my hook. All right, I'm just about at this corner. I have one more stitch to do, and I've reached this corner, and it's just the corner that's opposite this one. You can see those three initial single crochets are coming out of it. We're gonna go into that space and do our slip stitch just like normal. And then all we're going to do is turn our work and start working down this edge. And it's actually a little bit more obvious to see where to put your stitch down this edge. I guess there's a super obvious openings and then a little less obvious in between. But it's just those spaces there, but as long as you're making sure it's the same opening that that uh, round of single crochets is coming out of, then you will stay on the right track. So all we're going to do is just jump right to that next one over on this side and do our stitch like normal. And then we will start working down these stitches here, jumping to the next one, grabbing our yarn in the back, pulling it through to the front, and through the loop on our hook, jumping to that next opening, pulling it through to the front, and through the loop on my hook. And I'm just going to keep working my way down this line of stitches here. And again, I'll come back on when I get to the bottom and show you one more time. All right, again, I have one final stitch here to do prior to this corner. And once again, we just jump right into that corner and do our stitch like normal, turn our work, and then we're going to work along this line here, which again, it's quite clear because that's that original chain there, so the openings are nice and clear. And we will just work our way surface crocheting along the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this up off camera. Again, when we get to this side, we'll go right into this corner here, turn our work, and work our way back up this way. But when I've made my way around, I'll come back on and I'll show you how to fasten it off. Once again, I'm almost where I started. I have that one final stitch. 
and then I'm back where I've started. So I'm going to go into that same stitch that I started in, that top right corner, and do my slip stitch like so. And then I'm going to cut my yarn, so I'll just leave my hook in place. I'm going to cut my yarn, and I'll get that out of the way. And then I'm going to pull that yarn through. So I'm pulling it through to the front of the project, and then coming from the back to the front, I'm gonna put my hook through that same opening and just grab that yarn strand. So it's gonna be going over top of the loop from that stitch. So I'll grab it and pull it through to the back, like so. And you can see once it's pulled through, it looks nice and clean in the front. So at this point, I'm just gonna turn my work over and those two ends from the surface crochet, they should be coming out of the same spot here. I'm just going to double knot it, just to make sure that that does not come undone. And I won't pull too, too tight, but I'll just do a double knot, like so. And you can see it looks nice and clean in the back, as well as the front. So now I'm gonna go ahead and sew in all of my ends off camera, and then we'll have a look at our final project.